Welcome to another episode of Unconditioned Mind. Today we're talking about gender inequality, focusing on women leadership corporate experience. I have an exciting guest today, Cindy Mabaso Koyana, a good friend, former partner, you name it, you know, we've come a long way together. So we're going to have an exciting conversation. So Unconditioned Mind is part of Awakened Global. We want to take the message out there that we've been developing over the few months. So we really exciting. It's exciting for us to be launching this podcast. So maybe let's just start by you telling us a little bit about your background, uh, where you are coming from, what are you doing now? Thanks, Ngu. This is indeed an exciting moment. And congratulations on this journey that you've actually started and awakening everybody else alongside you being awakened. Um, yeah, I grew up in Durban. Uh, in a township uh, called Umlazi, just outside of Durban. I was, uh, uh, I lived with my mom and brother, so we were a single uh, parent-led home. And I actually was always a curious child. And in that state, I know my mom used to ground me a lot and and uh, t- taught me very uh, interesting values of you know respect humility and um, and hard work so that was the person I grew up knowing a disciplinarian um, who was always clear to us my brother and I that education is what will take us out of the situation we were in, like I guess most black families where we had very little, in fact, I would say we were really uh, maybe bordering on being poor as a family. Um, and my mother worked as a general worker, basically a cleaner at a hospital. So that was something that she always drilled in our heads, that we needed to educate ourselves, work hard for us to be able to get out of the environment and the situation we were finding ourselves in. So that drove me right from the beginning and also instilled values of Danam, anything you do, pray. So she taught me God. And in that whole journey of uh, growing as a young person, being um, motivated in then doing you know, something about my life that is meaningful and knowing that I'm going to almost be the one who changes the the, 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 the situation at home, a tall order on me, uh, but I, I made it my mission. And I was very, very privileged to then be able to go and study um, the CA route, something I had known very little about. And you know, Nunculega, I ended up knowing about you later in life. I just read a book in um, in high school that my mom was given by one of the doctors at the hospital, which said a career for girls. And it said, if you are studying accounting, and I happen to be studying accounting, and I also loved maths, you can be a chartered accountant. So I said, okay, I'm going to be this. Um, and that is how I landed in this, in, 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 in this environment. Yeah. Is it um, not amazing how God will chat the way for you. I mean, whenever people uh, worry about, I don't know what I want to do, I always say, those who seek will find. You know, God will guide you towards the right thing, and and you're just proving that. And actually, it is so true, because when you look back and you think, how did that happen? It can only be a higher power Mm -hmm. and a higher being, and that is God. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. You've occupied various roles, you know, in your career. Uh, I know the listeners would love to hear about your career journey uh, up to, up until actually where you are now, just briefly. Yes. So having studied accounting, the CA route, because for me to land there, by the way, um, just to backtrack a little bit, at high school, doing this accounting and loving maths, it was clear in my head that I'm going to go and work at a bank as a teller. So that, for me, was my goal. You know, when people you know, are asked about their dreams and they'll paint these lofty dreams, I'll honestly admire them because, for me, it was like 
wow, with this accounting, I'm going to go and just be that uh, on the front line of, of a bank. Thankfully, our school spoke about a bursary that will be offered to the highest student to then go and study. And that was the only time I started thinking of university to say, could this be possible then? Because, oh my goodness, I can tell you now, that bursary has my name on it. And I knew that I now have to be the top student. I was always maybe number three, four, five, um, and I worked hard to get that. So for me, that became a breakthrough that allowed me to go and study and become a chartered accountant. As much as I'm an extrovert, like as you know, mm. I was always clear at university to say, I know where I come from. Those messages and those prayers that my mom used to do every night when we went to bed, it rang in my head all the time. And for me, that is what I realized, even now being a parent, the importance of grounding values and being consistent with a message and what you want to role model in children because they'll always remember even when they are not in front of you. So I knew that I needed to focus. I then was, you know, um, uh, privileged to get a, 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 um, a that bursary was a um, was Robertson Spices and their auditors with Deloitte. So the HR director used to say to me when they'll come to check on me uh, on, on, on campus at, at Peter Maritzburg, which was amazing back then. So, you know, when you look at corporate programs of not just funding but also supporting the well-being of the you know of the of, of the bursary students it goes a long way so when you know the hr director mr kins will be traveling past peter maris where he come to raise and check on me wow. and that for me had such a sense of 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 humanity of meaning and even when i would be stressed when my mom will be sick my mom would, would actually be given an opportunity to go to the, to the factory nurse and doctor of Robertson Spices because Robertson's was not far from my home. So I knew that my mom is looked after, taken care of. Wow. So all those little things really mattered. And when I saw those acts of kindness and how they were landing on me, I think in com co combined with my teachings, the teachings of my mother, that is what has also shaped the person that I have become. So qualifying as a CA, um, after, you know, that support from Robertson's, it's funny because there was a mining house that was known in the country that used to give bursaries either to engineering or accounting students. They had turned me down saying that, we don't think you'll ever become a chartered accountant. This is not wow. for you. Why don't you try marketing or HR? That is what the aptitude test gave out. I was obviously very hurt, but also that drove me because there is a part of me as well that always says, if someone says I can't, I am going to then work even harder to prove that I can. I may choose not to, but I can. So I was very clear, I will be a chartered accountant. So, you know, uh, this is Lego. for me, that break of Robertson's, the, I look back at my life, people who've given me a break. I then go to Robertson's, finish my, uh, paying back my bursary. And whilst I'm working in Durban at Robertson's, there is then this call that says, in the wake of our democracy, we are now looking for professionals because there is this minister uh, at, uh, in, in government and public enterprises who is saying, you know, black professionals must be given an opportunity. So long before it was uh, fashionable to do joint assignments by professional services firms, Mam Stella Sikau was clear. She went beyond the call of duty because she went to the ground and will find black professionals, find women. So when I was asked to say there is a firm, you know, there's a, a, a lady in Johannesburg who is the first black 
woman chartered accountant in the country. She is actually uh, setting up a firm because we're now going to be given opportunities um, you know, in, in the public sector and we are expected to roll our sleeves as black professionals because this is the same government that fought for us and opened opportunities. So where else could we then go and give back and add value but the public sector? And that is how I was introduced to you, Sis Nongkululeko, <laughs> to be one of the founder members of Kobodo. Which is something I say to you as a woman of God, you know, that grace of you had a name for yourself. You had already started a firm before. You were basically now re-launching, um, uh, 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 you know, yourself as, a, as, as an audit firm, um, as, as Kobodo. But you said, I'm now launching it differently. It's not going to be a one-man show because I am ready now to seize the opportunities. And for me to do that, it means I needed to make sure that there is a team around me. And you allowed all of us to be called the founders of Kobodo. <laughs> I look back and I'm thinking, you had already had the strategy. You had set the tone. Yes, now to actually bring it to fruition, to life, you needed a number of partners because Mam Stella Sikha was very clear. She said, for you to be able to audit you know, uh, large state-owned entities, it means you guys need to demonstrate seriousness. You're not going to do it as individuals. You know, and each person wants to be on their own. We need to collaborate. We need to come together and build that critical mass. And that was something that you saw and you then gave me that stepping stone as a partner. You know, we all started as partners and you made us equal partners. You know, something that, again, not many people will do. People say, I am the founder. I'm bringing you guys in. So I've got the lion's share. But you were gracious enough to give us that stepping stone. And I want to thank you today. Wow. Wow. I mean, you know, we, we are focusing on gender inequality here. And of course, I mean, we have to think about all inequalities, race as well. And, and, and I sit back and, and I think about Mam Stella and you know, I had, had this dream of a medium-sized black accounting firm before Mam Stella or anything like that because I wanted to seize this moment <coughs> of a new country and new democracy. And if that opportunity had not opened, that dream would have fallen flat. So even when we think about, you know, women empowerment and we complain about the slow pace of, of transformation, you know, you've shared how that shaped you to become the woman you are today, the leader you are today. Where do you think we are? I mean, if back then we had those opportunities, but we're still complaining today about lack of opportunities for women. I mean, you look at the C-suite of these organizations, how many women are there? Still we're complaining. Compared to where you're coming from, where do you think we are today? You know, Sis Nankulog, I think we need to uh, say that we are definitely uh, way ahead of where we are back then in terms of some transformation, but at the same time, we are not, we are not where we are meant to be. The road is still long. Um, the, you know, there is still a lot that needs to be done. Today... We see, I mean, one of the prides is Mary Villagazi becoming the first woman of one of the large financial institutions in our country. And I remember Mary being one of the um, uh, 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 founding the, the early stage board, um, you know, uh, 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 board of directors of AWCA, the African Women CAs. And she was one of the people who would roll their sleeves in saying, there's so few of us here. We need to do the work of giving back. So, I mean, you're seeing, um, you know, your Funegas at Standard Bank, you're seeing your uh, Priscilla's um, at, 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 who was the CEO of BP South Africa. But the numbers are still very low. They are better at a non-executive. Why? Because the challenges of inequality the discrimination, 
the microaggressions, because the policies are there, the targets are there, corporates know what they need to do. The diversity and inclusivity policies are clear. However, why is it not happening? Because they are still, you know, those undertones of patriarchy that challenge us. We also have this dual responsibility or multi-responsibility of being family builders at the same time as having to be leaders in, in, in the professional and the business world. And we know that these are things that we can do if we are given, you know, we are enabled and, and given enabling environments. But the challenge is that those environments, are, there are very few organizations who make that possible, who will allow the women to thrive in their leadership positions, but also accepting and understanding that, you know, the environment needs to be, um, uh, 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 you know, empowering enough. So the subtleness of, you, 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 as they call it, the unconscious biases are those things that you find there's a revolving door where the, the, there is a, a, we step in, but quickly we go out because for us to live a balanced life where we are happy and thriving in, bo- in all these responsibilities, because it is possible, you, you, you know, depending on how you are supported in doing that. So I do believe that we are still way behind and, um, and, 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 and at the same time, let us celebrate the wins. I know people sometimes say, what are we celebrating in August? Because there is still a lot of work that we need to do. Women, as there is, you know, gender-based violence. They are, we are regressing. You know, if you talk about the public sector that Mam Stella opened the doors for, we, this country started seeing black people and women thriving, leading, you know, institutions meaningfully. When you look at some of the black and, and women leaders in the private sector, they cut their teeth in the public sector. They were given opportunities that of meaning in the public sector. Your Sizwe Ngasanas, your Gloria Sirobis, you know, your Saki Makozomas. These are people who've gone and done great things because government gave us the foundation. Where we are today, unfortunately, is that that great work somehow has... Actually, we have regressed because was we were realizing that for us to be given the equal, equal opportunities that we, re, we also deserved as black people, there was a sense of we needed to work hard, we needed to, 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 to ground ourselves in education and, 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 and be given those meaningful positions. Unfortunately, there has been a shift in our society. But sadly, you also are seeing it globally, where the spirit of materialism, the spirit of the now, the spirit of wanting to build easily, has unfortunately come into spaces where even those winds we saw in our country have now been unraveled. Because that very same public sector that was our stepping stone, unfortunately, has become the same poison chalice where as a black professional, as a woman, when you're in that space, you end up having to walk a very dangerous journey because very few people are coming out of that environment today to go to the next level, but they're coming out bruised. Yeah, I call it um, a slaughterhouse. <laughs> you know, I want I want us to go back to that uh, issue that of the revolving door, especially at Sina level. But I want to hone in on this issue of um, back then. You know, we saw these opportunities both as black people and women, and we grabbed them with both hands and we used them as we're sharing those in, in corporate positions and even us as black accountants, for instance. But when you look at transformation today, 
when you look at the leadership of even those SOEs, that's why I ask myself this question of when we complain about the slow pace of transformation, who are we complaining to? Because who can actually champion our own transformation better than others? I think that whole attitude of government has to do this uh, for us and then chasing these riches that you are talking about, yeah. we, we lost the plot mm -hmm. at, at that time. So what do you say to this statement of who are we complaining to? Who must champion our transformation? What do you think we should do today to go back to that era where we saw a lot of progress that gave us a lot of hope? Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting question, sis, because, you know, any transformation, whether of self or of an institution, requires both external enablers, be it policy, laws, uh, and then internal, you know, work. Um, and I say this because you are spot on. We in, are in a country where there were policies and legislation that was set to allow the transformation. But I cannot then only depend on that. Those open the doors. But I need to step in. I must now not be carried that now that the door is opened, I cannot now be carried and expect everything to be put on the table for me. I do believe that there is a sense of entitlement that has also come with our history. We probably, as a black nation and women, have got so much pain and brokenness in us that we... We, we are still believing that somebody owes us something without underplaying or downplaying that. You know, when you actually look at any work on self, you cannot always be blaming a, the next person or an abuser or how you've been brought up. You know, I was an orphan. I was al always been the one given all the hard work. How do you take that and make it into an opportunity? Because people who succeed, you know, organizations that succeed, you know, leaders who end up becoming leaders will always tell you that there was always a catalyst into me going to the next level. Because if everything was given to me on a plate, what are the learnings for me? So what you are actually highlighting is how long can I talk about being, dis you know, not being given opportunities because at some point, I had a, 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 a role model and a mentor, you know, Philip Hockaby at Iwa, who used to say, leadership can be given, can be taken, depending on an environment. There are moments when you must wait for leadership to be bestowed or be given to you. But there are also times where you must take leadership when you realize that there's a depth of leadership around me. So I'm a firm believer that if I had waited for things to be done for me, I would not be where I am. I've been fortunate that they've been, you know, I've been given certain breaks, but it depends what I did with them. That is what I believe you are raising the awareness in the awakening to say, wake up. You can't be sitting on your laurels and expect to win and succeed and be of impact and do something with your life such that when that bell rings, when your day is when when your life is done and look back what would you have done would you have been waiting for someone oh no they didn't open the door for me um oh no i the door was opened but i did not have you know they didn't give me enough tools for me to then go in and there is a space for that but it can't be just that you know Cindy you you are talking about those people who take uh, initiative and take responsibility for their own growth and progress. But uh, those are the special ones. 
Not everybody is fortunate to be like that. The reality of the situation is that, you know, women have been fighting this battle and this struggle for a long time. There is now a situation where they do have a seat at the table. You know, they do get a slice of the pie, but are they free? When I look at women in corporate right now, they are surviving, not striving, yeah. you know, because unfortunately there's this stereotype of women that has been created by society uh, coming from all those um, myths about women being inferior and weak and uh, incapable and all of that. When you step into that door, you are faced by this attitude around women. And then women find a way of surviving in these environments, which is where it's few of those who would say, in spite of the barriers that are be, be before me, I'm going to find and chat away for myself. But for the average woman, they, 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 they get into these hostile spaces and they realize that for my safety and security, and for me to fit in and be acceptable, and uh, for me to keep my job, you know, I have to, you know, sort of self-abandon and choose self-abandonment and, 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 and be this stereotype woman that I'm supposed to be. So for me, women are still not free. What, what do you say to this statement, and what do you think can be done to, because women deserve also to thrive, just as men are thriving in these spaces. It, it, it really breaks my heart that women, in spite of the opportunities that have opened up, they are still not free in these spaces. So the men you are talking about in these environments, in these organizations where we go in and we're finding this hostile environment, are actually coming from homes. They're coming from a society. And this is the society that they are still an ecosystem of or a microcosm of that society that is still very patriarchal, a society that still questions a woman, you know, how do you, I mean, we are in families where it is okay for a man to work very late to be traveling and, um, you know, and, 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 and be, um, in, in that corporate environment and fight. But for women already, you know, you are fighting a, a, a societal norm and statements and messages that come even from your own home before you even go and deal with the men you are finding in the workplace. The sad thing is that in the home, it's not just the men, actually. It is the very same women that are creating this, um, uh, 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 you know, angst on, on younger women where, and understanding where our, our, our mothers have been. So they still frown upon a woman who works late, a woman who is um, traveling and is not, um, you know, you are not spending time with your, enough time with your children. And it is not about the quantity of time. It becomes the quality of the time you spend with your children. And, and so those are some of the societal norms that are also tripping us because that's where the guilt comes in. And then you think, can I really be this ambitious and say, I want to be the CEO of the organization where I am right now? Because being the CEO, to your point, you need to be visible, you need to be um, uh, uh, attending um all socials and be there. You need to be working these ridiculous uh, hours. You need to be out of the country. And, and, and there's a home here where you are getting the equal messages of you not being good enough as a wife, as a mother, as a sister, as a family member. So there is a lot of work that still needs to be done bottom up was in the institutions and in the corporates where we are expected to lead, they, it also has to be top down where they are enabling and driving this, um, you know, whether it is programs, whether it is also the empowering 
of the men themselves on how they also contribute in how we end up becoming small, be, believing that, you know, maybe it is not good to be ambitious as a woman. Maybe it's not good to be feisty and fight for your rights. So even when you are vocal around the environment that must be created, not just for yourself, but also for the younger women that are coming up, you get guillotined very quickly because these environments are also not yet used to women who are actually standing up, speaking out. And even ourselves, you think, no, 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 don't cause too much trouble. You know, um, otherwise you're going to be out of here. And sometimes you also end up saying that. And realities of livelihood where you believe I need to provide, you know, for, you know, uh, uh, for, for my family. And you think, let me lie low and then fit in. And then we, are, we become unhappy. And that unhappiness, unfortunately, starts contributing to the person you are and the person you become. Because I, I'm sure that not many people who are happy in towing the line, in uh, being pleasers in the organization, and having some times to also act against those who look like them just because they want to belong uh-huh. in the, on the other side. So I do believe that Lego work has to be done bottom up. So us as mothers, uh-huh. how we are bringing up, you've done an amazing job in the sons that you've brought up. You can see that, you know, they are uh, 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 not just liberal in their thinking, but human beings who are grounded holistically and respect everybody in women or or men. And so that is what we need to do in our homes, in bringing up our girls for them early to know that I can be anything that I want to be. And our boys also respecting that, you know what, my sister is good at this and I'm not good at it. She, I'm good at this and she, not because she is a girl, but because that is what she, that's her gift. You know, that is what she actually chooses, um, you know, for, for her journey, for, her, for, you know, for her career. And she must also be supported in that. So those are some of the things, Nunkuluga, that I believe there is still a lot of work to be done starting in our homes. I couldn't agree more because, I mean, I've looked at these roles that were defined when, when, whenever they were defined of the role of the woman, the role of the man. The reality of the situation is that that is no longer the case. Yeah. In today's world, uh, women are providers, right? Exactly. And uh, in, in today's world, we, we always talk about balance when it's relates to the woman, although you may both be working, both the husband uh, or wife or partners are are, are also working, but it does not, uh, even these uh, older women that we're talking about, they always look at the woman must sacrifice because she has to carry this responsibility for society of, of domestic tasks, raising the children and all of that. And when I looked at this, especially because I started to, you know, refresh in my home outside of these roles, and I saw how it was working in my own home, that these are just skills. Cooking is skills. Washing is skills. Cleaning is skills. Nurturing children is skills. It's a skill. Because, uh, so what, what are we talking about? Why are we still struggling with this balance and, and equity uh, today when, in fact, women who have said that they couldn't be business leaders, they couldn't be in business or in leadership positions, uh, were trained, and now they're good at it yes. because it's just a skill. So men can also learn these skills so that you can find this equity. And, and what saddens me is that this guilt, ne, it's only us who are guilty. Where men don't feel guilty about being helped to provide. Do they feel guilty? No, no. they don't. 
women are the ones who sacrifice and say, "Hey, I don't want to be a bit, I don't want to be a bad wife or a bad mother." So I won't go for that senior position because it's going to demand more time for me. But men are free to have their ambitions to reach as high as they want. They don't feel guilty about the fact that the woman, the wife has to sacrifice for him to reach this high school in spite of the fact that now the wife is also working and and is a provider. So I mean, I look at Kaya, who you were talking about just now. He's divorced. He's sharing the responsibility 50-50. One week, the children are with him. One week, they are with the ex-wife. Who's nurturing the children yeah, that week? When they're, when they're with him. Exactly. Him. Society said men cannot be yeah, nurturers. Yeah. Only women are nurturers. Yeah. No, he makes sure that the hair is done. Right? Right. Uh, there's a meal for the children, right? right? The, the homework is done. All of these things that we said are the responsibility of the wife. The house is clean. And, and all of these things. And I mean, I have this picture of this video of Kaya and the daughter. The daughter standing on a chair, stirring this big pot with the father, cooking together. Amazing. So these beliefs are myths. Yes. They are really myths. Cindy, and, and as you are saying, so how do we relook at these roles now? How do we start to have those conversations both at work, create safe spaces at work, but as you are saying, it has to start in the home. In the home, yes. Certainly, I mean, in fact, you've made an amazing example. You've given a great analogy, um, and the example you've given is a demonstration that we need to reorganize society in terms of making sure that everybody must have these skills, you know, so that when you are the one who has to step in as a man, you step in. When you as a woman have to step in, you, you, you then step in. In fact, I, there's a good example that was made by Sis Pumzile where she said um, in Germany, when a young boy was asked, um, you know, what you do, what do you want to be when you grow up? Would you want to be the president? And the boy said, no, I'm, I'm, I can't be the president. In Germany, only girls become president because of Angela Merkel. So it is important that we role model the kind of society that we want to see. It is in the home. I mean, it's not cool. you use an example of your son. I'll use, the, I'll use an example of my son. My son, um, when the school, um, let me start here, very early, he was eight, nine at the school he was at, at Red Hill, he said, I will be the head boy at the school. Very interesting. And, um, you know, with that confidence and claiming it. Then when the school five years ago changed and said there's no head boy or head girl, there's going to be a president and everybody's going to go through a process of applying. You are voted by the school and a vice president and then a committee, you know, a treasurer, um, head of uh, judiciary who deals with student issues. So that is a leadership because in the corporate space, there is no woman CEO or, or male CEO. There is one CEO. If it happens to be a woman, then it's the woman and the deputy CEO. And that is what this very forward thinking uh, principal came and did. You know what my son said five years ago? He said, my goodness, why has this principal come to take my vision? I would say, what vision? He says, then it means if I'm going to be competing with girls, mom, I will not be, it, it, chances of me leading, it means I have to fight harder. He says, do you know how good girls are. <laughs> I see them in class. They are amazing. They are organized. They are the ones always prepared. You know, when they when somebody has to raise their hand to get things done, the girls are the ones that are always, you know, uh, leading the way. I'm seeing leaders in girls, ma'am. And he was so stressed about it. So indeed, when he was the um, only boy that was now shortlisted amongst girls for the president and uh, 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 role. And he said, you see, mom, 
if it was just head boy, I was now, it was now a given, I'm the head boy, <laughs> but no, I'm still going through the motion and the process. And let me tell you what has been amazing to see is that the president indeed is a, is, 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 is a, is, 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 a, is a girl and he as a vice president, it's been amazing to see my son working with this girl as a team. In fact, the school was even saying that what a team. And they said to me, he, he, he is so comfortable in being the deputy to this girl. And it is something that the school is actually, you know, excited to showcase. And I said to them, actually, the day he was appointed vice president, my husband uh, and I, we sat him down and the sister, we had a meeting at, at home. And I remember very well what, you know, Loazi said to my son. He said, so son, your responsibility is to support Shaila. She is the president, you're the vice president. You're going to work as a team in supporting her. Yes, there are some roles that are yours and those that are hers, but your responsibility is supporting her. And for me, you know, that was also part of, you know, when you, you, you have those kind of conversations as a home, you realize that, thank God, we, you know, we may not be perfect, but this is the type of society we want to have and and you can imagine now uh, that picture uh, for all the students that a, a woman can be the president and the man the deputy president because even in our country though we've had woman uh, deputy president but there was always the man who's the president and the woman deputy president now we're, we're changing the psyche of society to say whoever is best should occupy the position. And, you know, Cindy, in, 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 in all these roles, the sad part is that even when the woman in the home is the one who's more talented, more ambitious, who can provide better for the family, uh, it's still shunned upon. You, you know, instead of saying, let's use these uh, gifts in the family better, in my home, for instance, I was the one who was more ambitious. I was the breadwinner. But I still had to carry the burden of domestic responsibilities. Instead of having a conversation as a family and saying, Hi, Ngu, you are the one who can do this. Right. I will then help right. with the right. other side so that you, you are not stressed. At the end of the day, I'm divorced today because I was so exhausted yeah. Yeah. of trying to be a traditional wife and a woman. I'm so excited about the story. And these students who are now being socialized yes. to think differently about the role of a, a woman and the role of a man. It, 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 it's exciting. So we can do this. We can actually do this. And we as we are saying, this. start starting early so that the, the, the children who are coming up are not caught up in these roles and, 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 and all of that. And I guess it also speaks to how we build ourselves and the, as human beings. Because when you are comfortable in, under your skin, that, you know what, we, we, it, it, Sisunku is the great person in our country when we, it comes to issues of leadership. And, you know, I will be called when, you know, we are needing women in the investment space and we are comfortable with that. The same, so as human beings, once we get to that spot of saying, I lean on you for this because you do well in this. And those are some of the things we need to teach our kids very early because that dance has to happen, you know, where you step in, I step in, and the home, and it happens in the workplace. It happens broader society. That is the one thing, and it starts with working on self and understanding self, you know, self worth. Unfortunately, right now as a society, our main preoccupation is building net worth rather than self worth. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And I look at my daughter and her husband. Total equity there. You know, when you have Mother's Day or, or Sunday lunch or whatever, it's not automatic that Tule is the one who's going to cook. It may be my son-in-law at my house. 
it may be my son, Mnueba, who's, who's in Johannesburg, or my daughter. Yes. And, 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 and I look at them at their home. When you visit, you might find Quentin cooking or washing dishes or hanging washing, you know, and the, the nature in the, in the family. Because this thing of roles... It's really a myth. I really couldn't agree you more. But I want us to sure. go back to this topic. Yes. We're excited today about Mary, right. you know, yes. and, and so on. Yes. And uh, we don't want in a few years to be talking a different story about this exciting news. I'm really worried about these women who occupy these spaces where, you know, the, the, the environment was male-dominated, very masculine, and the, the stereotype of a leader is shaped around a man leading from a masculine mm -hmm. energy. And, and women are expected then to also lead from a masculine energy. And, you know, the, the, the sad part for me is that we have both energies, feminine and, and masculine. And women, when they lead from their feminine energy, that does not make them weak. And we, we've seen situations, for instance, where you're just confused at how this woman is being worked out of this system. But when you look at the financial results, I mean, she took this, this organization from loss-making to profit, but because she did that out of feminine energy, you have a, an organization that is healthy because she's leading from a feminine energy. Sorry, energy. And and you you look at corporate today. People are stressed. There's anxiety, depression, and all of that. But when you have that balance of both the masculine, which we need mm -hmm. to get things yes, done, yes. but the feminine which creates this environment of, of health mm, and safety. Mm. How do we change this stereotype so that women are allowed to be themselves? They are allowed to lead from whatever, you know, strong energy that you have so that we don't... I always feel that there's just more focus on, on women leaders and, and more pressure and unfairness in, in how they are looked at, the perceptions around them as, as women leaders. How can we correct this so that our little girls are not afraid to take up these senior positions? Because when they look at what happens, we're excited today celebrating this. Tomorrow the newspapers are talking a different story. Yeah. And it is said indeed, I mean, look at uh, what has happened in Transnet. It's women. You know, Portia, it's uh, Caesar, it is Nunkule uh, Gotlamini, all at one go. And it's not a good reflection, um, you know, uh, for, for, for women because then society starts using it and saying, you see, these women are not coping. And that is not the reality. That is not true because what happens is that, as they call it, the glass cliff that during risky times, when organizations are going through stressful times, generally, all of a sudden, a woman pitches to come and lead it and take it out of the waters. In fact, just last night, when we were celebrating uh, you, 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 you at AWCA, a conversation that ensued is that, why are they leaving now? Things are starting to turn the corner because one of them is a customer. She actually is in the mining space owns a mine and um, and has been crying and she says, but things were things were now turning. In fact, we're announcing in there's a line that is now going to be opening. Why are they leaving now? We've seen that that class cliff to say as things are starting to go out of you, you know the 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 the, the you know the, the the shaky waters, then all of a sudden you are pushed over the the the, the cliff. I do believe that says Nonkulego, it is the men who need to actually also, and I think this is where we spoke about the balance, that we can't always look at people to, you know, uh, and always blaming 
you know, the system and blaming others. What are we doing? But there is a role for others who've been sitting in the room for decades, for centuries, who have already got the skill, who, who, who are, who've been supported by society. Because the reason why men have been able to focus and do everything is because there is a woman who is looking after his family. Right? So those things have come naturally. Whereas for the women, there is some heavy lifting that still needs to be done. So who better make sure that this woman who's now coming to take over, you know, and, and, and I, I, I understand as well that, and I'm praying that it stays the same, that for the Mary Jenny, Alan Pullinger has been the one you know, who's been the sponsor. So we need these men to be the sponsors. You know, right now we run mentorship programs for for women. You know, I'm mentored by you. I'm mentored by Sis Wendy. You know, I'm mentored Sis Tandy, you know, Gloria. And maybe then the men become incidental. The truth of the matter is they too need to do the heavy lifting in the rejigging, in the reshaping of society, you know, as the you know some of the statements we've been saying to say, um, I think again it was this Pumzile to say we must break this glass ceiling, but we're gonna hurt ourselves breaking this glass ceiling. Men, remove it. <laughs> <laughs> Why must we break it? So there is a role that needs to be played, you know, by men in making sure that the microaggressions that are there, now that there's a woman leader, oh, we're going to see now. Oh, you know, now we this, this company is not going to perform because the seriousness, the drive, the, the, the hardness is not going to be there because women are bringing this nurturing. You're going to be preoccupying yourself with people's well-being, mental well-being. And, and the reality is that that is when then women feel, then it means I must be hard. I must come across this hard and, and harsh person for people to respect me and get things done. I think, again, it is a, 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 a collaboration. We are not going to do it on our own. Men need to also do the heavy lifting. We talk about women empowerment. We are being empowered. And the sad thing is, Nkulego, well, it, 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 it's sad, it's a, it's a bittersweet because indeed, girls are getting stronger, right? Because they are being empowered. They are being taught this self confidence. Speak out, go for what you need. But now, the boys are, the pendulum is swinging the other way. It should not be at the expense. We are not saying it's at the expense of the boy. We are saying there's so much work that needs to be done here because we are so behind. However, the work that needs to be done on mm. the men, on the boy child, is this realization that you too need to be empowered in understanding the impact of what you do when you push out this woman. You know, when you make it so difficult for this woman to lead and they go back into society. This is now a, a bruised woman, a bruised mother, who also has other responsibilities. They're not just, they're not only looking after an organization. They have got a family that they must look after and must lift. So now this person who's been knocked. So men need to realize that it is also for their own benefit in making sure that why must it be so spectacular when a woman has you know must now must leave why must it be followed we were wondering how this person was going to do it and 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 when it's men the macro issues they start at the wrong time the rent you know the 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 the, the for forex the rent you know uh, uh, the, the macroeconomic things were against them you know the market had shifted you know it's all things that were out of their control when it is men but when it is women, it is your capabilities that a uh, lack of that contributed to that. So uh, your question is that how do we make the shift? I believe that men have to come to the party. It is that men that must be the sponsor and go around and saying, this is your next leader because they can do this. And in fact, they'll even do it better than what I you know, was able to do. Yes, you know, uh, uh, 
what you've shared actually really is, is that solution. It's going to take both the men and the women and society for, for, for us to solve these problems. And I always say that, you know, we're talking about a slice of the pie and uh, for, the, for the women and they sit at the table where women are not free to be themselves. And I always think that if they bring half of themselves, uh, how are they going to contribute to expanding this pie Baking more pies, you know, growing the economy. When we use our resources, human resources, effectively yeah. as a country and supporting whoever is in that position, because when it is a man, he is supported, yes. and we must equally support a woman when they are in that position. Then we're going to be able to grow this economy. And those who are outside right now waiting for us mm -hmm to expand the pie so that they may also come in, we, we are going to see that happen. But it is a journey, my sister, and um, why we have this podcast is so that we can start to have these conversations, right? right? right. Uh, and make whatever little impact yes, we have yes. in trying to shift the mindset because that is the only way we, we have. We've run out of time. Ah, and you. it's <laughs> such a wonderful, uh, rich yeah. conversation yes. but as we say at awakened it's all about self as you've been saying when you take the time to find who you truly are you will lead and uh, live from your authentic power thank you my sister thank you so much and all the best with the movement that you have started thank, thank you. you thank you